Good evening, everybody. Kathy Syrett from confidentleaderjourney.com here. And this is the first in a, an occasional series that I'm going to be doing where I share different perspectives, different ways of looking at things, focusing around the EDI area, equality, diversity and inclusion. Now, hands up, I am not an expert in this. Okay. I am a strong believer in equality, diversity and inclusion in organizations and in the business world. I also have a value that as leaders, this is somewhere where we need to be in the forefront of things and build our understanding of what equality means, what diversity means, what inclusion really means for organizations we're working in and for us personally as leaders. So I'm passionate about it, but I'm not that expert in it. So I thought who better to start sharing my baby steps into this field uh, than me to share this with you. Because some of you might also be thinking, how can I move into this field? How can I expand my knowledge and awareness and my leadership capabilities and my confidence? So I'm going to be putting together this little series where I look at different aspects of equality, diversity and inclusion. And if you have any resources that you use in this area, please share them on the Facebook page, Confident Leader Journey. Okay, because we'd really like to support each other in expanding our expertise in this area. Okay, so I'm going to start today by suggesting where we can all start when we're looking at diversity. Because you know, equality seems to be something that we take as a kind of a moral value. There's a lot we can do around that. Inclusion is a different area, but let's start with the diversity area because this can get quite confusing for us all. What exactly do we mean by it? And the book I'm going to recommend we all start with is this one, Matthew Syed, Rebel Ideas. And you'll see the subtitle is The Power of Thinking Differently. The diversity he focuses on in this book is cognitive diversity. And as a way in to exploring the value of diversity in an organisation, and the hugely negative consequences of not having diversity in an organization, this is a brilliant book. Now, by focusing on cognitive diversity, what Matthew Syed does is he keeps the conversation at a purely business level and problem solving level. Obviously, this has implications for all other areas of diversity. But by focusing on the cognitive one, He's able to gather research, look at scenarios and analyze them from the point of view of if you have different thinking and different worldviews and different perspectives, it makes an actually researched and validated difference to an organization. So I think by focusing on the cognitive diversity and literally bringing that term into the more public domain, I think he's done a really good service for the whole EDI area, especially for those of us who are taking our first steps into it. Now, when he talks about cognitive diversity, one of the things he does go into is how different cultures also look at things differently, different things we focus on, different things we look at, the, different, the way different languages influence things. He talks about something called perspective blindness. You know, we grow up with our own frame of reference and therefore we don't notice anything that's outside that frame of reference. Um, and these differences are invaluable to organizations when they are actually planning and moving forward in their thinking. Now, what's interesting is some of you uh, may have read about in earlier leadership studies about this whole concept of groupthink. Um, it was very big back in the 70s and 80s as a really big issue when teams were working together, okay? where it was known that you know, teams would recruit in their own in image. And when they were working on a project, if someone who was perceived as influential had the first idea, everyone else would go along with the idea. And it takes so much energy to go against an already stated idea that you actually didn't get any creativity or any non-standard thinking. Um, he refers to it, he's got a chapter called Rebels versus Clones. So um, there's an interesting issue there that we do tend to recruit people like ourselves. We have that whole focus of, we've got a strong organizational culture, right? But does that mean it closes down and excludes different perspectives? This is something we need to think about for our cognitive diversity. One of the other things we need to explore 
is that companies who have more cognitive diversity perform better. He's got the statistics in here, but it is a researched and validated fact that cognitive diversity increases the effectiveness of organizations. So it's a really good primer for showing why diversity matters, diversity in thinking, diversity in backgrounds. Um, and, and it gives you some, some classic examples of how blind thinking um, can, can hurt us. So uh, one of the examples he has is, is um, when an Air Force was having a lot of problems, incident after incident with the pilots, and they didn't understand it because you know they 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 spent a lot of money researching the cockpit design and designing it very carefully but what they discovered was the cockpit had been designed for the average pilot because that was how you did design you designed for the average but when you're kind of designing a cockpit for fighter pilots you don't have an average fighter pilot the average fighter pilot was five foot seven a certain weight with a certain arm reach there wasn't a single pilot in that air force that matched that. So that cockpit wasn't actually optimal for anybody. It ended up being really bad for most of them. <laughs> and it wasn't until they went, we need a fully adjustable cockpit so that every pilot can make it right for them, that they realized that that was what was required. Now, the thing is that on most other things, building for an average doesn't matter. But when you're in the air force, it does. So having someone coming from outside the normal paradigms and thinking differently is very important. So if we're talking about diversity, one of the other things I like to think about is I like to challenge organizations and people with the question, how deep is your diversity? And I'd like you to reflect on this for yourself and think what it means. A lot of organizations have public statements of diversity. We believe in equality, diversity and inclusion. We have these policies in place. But how deep does that go? Is that in public announcements? OK, is that in the day to day behavior? Are people encouraged to think differently? Are they encouraged to dissent, disagree and challenge? Or is groupthink encouraged? Are you encouraging rebels or clones? Okay. Are you encouraging cognitive diversity on a day to day level? Or are you actually shutting it down every time it rears its head because it's not comfortable for you? If we're looking at deep diversity, we've got the level of public statements. OK, then look at the financial reports. Where does the money go? Does the money actually support those statements? If it does, how is it doing it? Exactly where is the money going? Is the money going on um, big schemes? So there's a very highly publicized scheme to bring on board more people from different groups. Is that all that's happening? Or is the money being spent on fundamentally restructuring the processes and systems of the organization so that they are truly inclusive? Okay. Is your recruitment system encouraging diversity? From something as simple as when the application forms come in, do you know someone's grouping? from when you look at the form or not? Where are you advertising? How are you advertising? One of the common complaints that a lot of companies make about diversity is, we just don't have the applicants. We can't have diversity on the board because we don't have enough people of that caliber. Great, so what are you doing about it? Deep diversity and a deep commitment to diversity is having systems and structures in place that create that pool of qualified, diverse candidates, not just bewailing that they're not available, but actually having systems and processes in place to develop them and build them from within. So I suppose my challenge to you is have a look at this book. Tell me what you think about cognitive diversity and let's start exploring this whole issue of equality, diversity and inclusion together so that we can be confident leaders in this area. This is your starter for 10. Kathy Cyrus at the confidentleaderjourney.com or Confident Leader Journey on Facebook. By the way, I'm also on TikTok. Yep, you've got a laugh. Okay. See you soon.